for I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and my hope, that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also, Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I know not. Hey, Pa! <coughs> hey, how you doing? So, thinking of suicide, are you? Is it possible that the Apostle Paul actually contemplated suicide? A religion-free deist seems to think it is very probable, but he's wrong, way wrong. We won't be disputing that the best English word for this one in Philippians is choose and not prefer, or that Paul is indeed expressing the idea of a choice. But does this mean it is possible, or even very probable, that he was actually contemplating suicide? You see, when it comes to this passage, it's not enough to just read it in English, or even in Greek for that matter, and say, yeah, here's what it means. The missing equation here is that Paul is using a certain rhetorical technique which one scholar calls feigned perplexity. Ancient writers use this technique to pose a dilemma in a dramatic way, or to teach a certain lesson. In a nutshell, here's what it involved. The writer, or speaker, would present two options for action one reflecting what they planned to do, which was the right choice, and one reflecting what they did not plan to do, which was a bad choice. The bad choice, the one they would not take, was used as a sort of contrast or object lesson. In Paul's case, he's using a choice between life and death as an example to the Philippians, encouraging them to choose between obedience to Christ on one hand and their own interest on the other hand. And as Paul goes on to say that he chooses life, which in turn means choosing obedience to God, so also he wants the Philippians to follow his example by choosing obedience and service. So what all this means for Religion Free Deist thesis is, it's not even the least bit probable that Paul was contemplating suicide. In fact, just the opposite. Paul is holding out suicide as the wrong choice to make in his circumstances. Now as an added bonus, let me frame one other point. Religion Free Deist says that because Paul thinks he'll get out of jail, there's no reason to think he's going to do something crazy at his trial. Well, that's true, but if it had been a real choice, then it probably wouldn't even be suicide he would have had in mind. What he would have had in mind, rather, was something along the lines of what happened with Socrates. Socrates was put on trial for his life, and he could have gotten out of his dilemma by just saying what his judges wanted to hear. But rather than compromise his principles, Socrates took the death penalty. So likewise would have been the case if Paul was actually indicating a real choice for death. It's not that he would do something crazy at his trial, but that he would maybe do nothing. Staying silent, like the way Jesus did before Pilate. So then, what does that leave us? Well... Oh dear, that sounds like a death blow coming. You're gonna clean all that up, right? Oh well, see you next time. <laughs>